Good day, right. everyone. This is Juanita Cap from Ridiculous Moments, and I have a very, very special guest here with me today. And he is, of course, Carlos Machado, the legend, guys, of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. We are so excited to host you, sir. Feel very welcome here. Juanita, what can I say? I feel like I know you forever. I talked to you for maybe three minutes before you press the record button. But uh, I'm honored to be here. Thank you for the invitation. And uh, yeah, I am Carlos Machado. I am uh, one of the Machado brothers. I happen to be the oldest. I can tell I'm not the biggest. I hope I'm the, the best looking uh, or the smartest. But my brothers didn't make my life easy, all right? So I'm one of five brothers. Came to America 32 years. Will be 30. Actually, uh, 2024 will be... 34 years uh, on April 1st, since uh, I came to America. It was actually April 1st of 1990, with one goal, to share what I knew, uh, jiu-jitsu, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. You know? so, and since then, I had good friends like Chuck Norris, uh, who helped me uh, establish myself in California when I first went there. Five years in L.A., love it. Uh, then we came to Texas, end of 95, and I have been here ever since, you know. So I, I always said, God bless America, but definitely I say also, God bless Texas. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to be here. I'm married, have four children, and uh, they're all born, made and born in Texas. And, uh, and I can tell you, I, I live the dream. You know, people talk about, what do you do for a living? I live a dream. You know, I do what I love. I love what I do. And I love the people I work with. So uh, in a nutshell, that's what it is. But now from a historic perspective, I was the first higher belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu to come to Texas. Uh, and uh, they, they gave me the title of Godfather of Jiu-Jitsu in the Southwest. Because uh, at one point in time, you know, uh, I was the guy that had produced the most amount of students who became eventually instructors of their own. So I, I created a vast lineage of BJJ guys. So anytime you came to Dallas or somewhere in Texas, for the most part was, oh, he's a student of Carlos Machado, or he's a student of a student of Carlos Machado. So I have, like I say, grandchildren already uh, of BJJ lineage, so to speak, okay? Uh other than that, uh, I, I'm head of a, an organization called the Cosmo Machado Jiu-Jitsu Association. So I try to help all the instructors, whether they do jiu-jitsu or they do any martial arts, uh, I share my dream with them. How can I share what I know and you make good use of it for what you want? And uh, the Cosmo Machado Jiu-Jitsu Association has approximately 140 locations that use our methodology. Mm -hmm. My emphasis is on the motto, train smart, stay humble. All right. So mm -hmm. I'm all about longevity. And a lot of time in the martial arts, you know that we train too hard, no pain, no gain kind of mentality. So our bodies take a blunt. And then as we get older and wiser, hopefully our bodies cannot function as well because we're, you know, reaping the injuries that, you know, or wear and tear that becomes somewhat, uh, you know, of, of something that happens uh, if you don't watch out how you train. So, uh, I mean, I luckily haven't been victim of any major injury throughout my entire uh, career as a martial artist, but I can see that there's a wear and tear that happens to all of us. Mm -hmm. That's why we also endorse the lifestyle, you know. Mm -hmm. you, the truth on the mat should be also the truth yeah. in the world you know so whatever principles you can use from one to the other mm -hmm. you know and being healthy mind body and soul it's a way to go i kind of go in a rant here and i'll let you steer the ship uh miss Juanita, because i am i'm going crazy here so i'm i'm ready for the questions so much wisdom shared there uh, carlos you know i love what you said that the truth on the mat must be the truth in the world I have been uh, speaking to people and doing interviews and telling them that the principles that we learn in the martial arts, because it's not just an art, it becomes your lifestyle, it becomes who you are. 
I, for instance, found myself in the odds. I found who I was in the odds. And it really helped me to take the principles from martial arts, from jiu-jitsu, and all the other styles that I do, over into my life, into my home, into my business, into how I raise my children, how I conduct myself. And uh, it's very important. And I think that's one of the things that, that really spoke to me. Martial arts, jiu-jitsu, um, especially taught me how to be present in the moment. How to be present in the moment and how to focus on that which I'm busy with here. And I think when we are present in the moment, we get so much more value from what we are going through and it helps us really to set the stage for our future. How does being present in the moment, for instance, help someone that's an athlete that wants to work on their technique? How does that uh, culminate to them becoming a great athlete or someone that's progressing well? Right, so in jiu-jitsu, you have no choice. If you are not aware where you are and who you're going with, yeah. you get choked up. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't think about what your bills you have to pay tomorrow, what argument you had with your wife uh, before you went to train. Yeah. Jiu-jitsu is selfish and exclusive. Mm -hmm. If you're on the mat, you, your opponent, and the mat become one. If the mm -hmm. world is going to end, you're, you're there. You know, there can be a tornado of sirens going off. Yeah. You know, you're not, you're a hundred percent on the mat. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think being in the moment has to do with awareness. Yes. There's a time and place for everything. Mm -hmm. When it's time for jujitsu, that means the whole world ends. Mm -hmm. There's only the jujitsu in your head because it's a chess game. You cannot just, uh, you know, get distracted. If you think you're already lost, if you think you're already, you're already late, you have mm -hmm. to be in the moment. It's about feeling. If you watch Daredevil uh, from Marvel, there's a Netflix series. I love it. You know, I think there's, they had three seasons. I watched every single season, right? And what's the thing with Daredevil? You can't see. He has, you know, absence of sight. He has to feel. We train blindfolded. A lot of times we want to develop our feelings. We realize jiu-jitsu is about feeling. You hear the person's breathing. Mm -hmm. You can even feel people's heartbeat if you get trained well enough, all right? So what happens is it gives you that, this sense of power. The world slows down. It's almost like you you watch a movie and then you start to slow down uh, the scene and you can pay attention to all the details. And jiu-jitsu is a, an example of the devil is in the details. What makes the difference being some, uh, between somebody who is good and somebody who is a master is their ability to see things that people don't pay attention to yes. because they're so aware of everything, they don't miss the details. And the details make all the difference usually the longer you go you realize that it's the smaller things mm -hmm. that will make the most difference yes. see what i'm saying and yes. this you can only attain with experience and maturity a lot of people young you know when they start if they are not taught which way to focus their attention they become distracted with stuff that don't matter you know and and delay their progress in more ways than one because like i said not every day is the same. Some days are better than others. So what's one law in jiu-jitsu? One mm -hmm. day you are the hammer, another day you are what? The nail. The nail. The nail. <laughs> and what's the law in life? Mm -hmm. You're not going to have the same day every day. Some yeah. days will be better. Some days will be worse. Mm -hmm. And then you start to cope with the situation knowing that the truth on the mat is the truth in the world. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's a lot easier for you to suffer the misery or the challenges of the obstacles on the mat because you have a degree of control and you have people that you can trust that want to help you grow. So when you get yourself out of the shell, you become that, uh, co you know, the, you become a butterfly. Mm -hmm. You know, you got out of the cocoon and you spread the wings. Now you're ready to fly. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, it's funny because, you know, I, as you were talking, uh, I was just figuring out here the three things that it doesn't matter what you do. These are the three things that any human has to have if you are to succeed on this planet. Yeah. Learn how to respect. Respect yourself mm -hmm. and respect others. But you don't you don't gain respect unless you earn it. Yes. It's not something, you know what I'm saying? So you got to give before you get. Yes. The other part is discipline. Things will not be easy or come easy. That's part of life. You see, amazing how you see people sometimes they reach 
uh, they climb a mountain, they reach a plateau, and they think that's the end of it. And they don't realize that if you stop climbing, you yes. start dying. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Life is about continuously growing. Mm -hmm. You know, and how do you grow? It's not by doing more. It's by doing more with less. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you want to be optimal. Jiu-Jitsu is not about, I'm going to match your strength or my power. No. Yeah. I'm going to match your strength or my technique. Mm -hmm. You know, and then people who are successful in life, you realize like, man, you have that almost that uh, distinction. Why do you have so many people that work so hard? You have those guys in construction that yeah. sweat, you know, under the sun and they go from early morning to late evening and it's a grind and they don't get paid the most. Mm -hmm. They don't get they have a lot more physical labor than most. And then you have other guys. It seems like they're barely moving and, they, and, and they're changing the whole world. That's and I'm it. not diminishing here the nobility of working, no matter what area of work you work, whether you sweat more or less, you're more physical labor than not. Yes. But I can tell you this, that having the discipline mm -hmm. to be consistent yeah. and realize that you can never grow alone, you ne can never be successful alone. I see a lot of times, like for instance, with the respect part, What's mm -hmm. one common thread with people that learn about respect, okay? They're mindful of their actions. Mm -hmm. They're mindful how they portray themselves outside, you know, yeah. the mat. But when they reach a certain level of success, they will remember all those who helped them yes. achieve that level. Because yes. man or woman, no man or woman are an island. Mm -hmm. You are always walking on the shoulders of giants. Yes. Anybody who has been before you has built this world that we live, that we have the opportunity to strive, to thrive, right? Yes. So, uh, and that's one thing that you see a lot of times with people that don't have that sense of respect. Mm -hmm. As soon as they get themselves in the limelight, they tend to forget mm -hmm. to give credit those who actually helped them be there yes. you know? and, and, and this is like a and i'm not complaining i'm just saying this is something that can happen and yes. we see that happen in there but when done right the sense of respect the discipline of being consistent and yes. persisting when everybody else quits because mm -hmm. what's the what's the finish line the finish line is not the end the finish yes. line is just uh uh how do i put uh uh, a step that mm -hmm. you reach up before you go further down the road, like one climb before you hit the plateau and get, then you go again. Uh, but the thing with the finish line, how many people they fall, they don't get up mm -hmm. and continue. They, 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 because they want things to be easier. Uh, and, and the sad thing is when you, the, the further you go, yeah. the, the harder the challenges, mm -hmm. but they say in scripture, God will never put a cross heavier on your shoulders than what you can bear. Right? Mm -hmm. So so uh, if you discount yourself and you don't believe in yourself, in the moments that you're going to be tested, uh, you know, and when you fall, you're not going to have the the, mm -hmm. the strength to get back up because you feel that you cannot take it. And, man, that's what a mistake. You know, after every storm, the sun will rise again. We don't always have that. Mm -hmm. And that brings us to the culmination, my opinion, of what an effect an instructor can have on a student or what is the real essence, what you want to reach uh, yeah. with martial arts, to change somebody's perspective and attitude. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I say attitude determines fortitude. Mm -hmm. You know, you cannot be strong yeah. unless you have the attitude of strength That's within. It. You know what I'm saying? So... And wow. we can go in whatever route you want, but I'm going crazy wow. here. Come on, bring it on. That's good. That's good. We're on a roll. We're on a roll. I love the fact that you mentioned Daredevil. I love that series, sir. That series, sir. I watched all of them with my son as well. And it the reason why we loved it so much is because of the fact that he's blind and that he's still, you know, fighting out there for justice. He didn't let anything hold him back. And he uh, relies on his senses. And you said something very important. You said when you become a skilled jiu-jitsu martial artist, you can slow everything down to the point where you can feel the heartbeat. And you've watched the series as well. 
he actually hears the heartbeats of the people that are, you know, attacking him. And then you said something else. You talked about the fact that jiu-jitsu is a chess game. And I love to tell people, you know, also when I'm uh, teaching, that, you know, it's all about that anticipation. What is your opponent's next move going to be? You have to kind of read their body language to know what is the next attack going to, where is it going to come from, what is it going to be. And that's very uh, meticulous on your part, you know, and that's why we talked about being present in the moment. When we are present in the moment, we forget about everything else. I remember Mike Yoshi teaching me at the very beginning, that was about it, almost a decade ago, he said, Juanita, when you step into this dojo, it doesn't mean if we are doing karate, if we are doing uh, kickboxing today, if we're doing self-defense or jiu-jitsu, he said, you leave whatever you were thinking about before class at the door. He says, this is your time, and this is the time that you are going to now focus. And that really taught me so many lessons, uh, Carlos, you know, that uh, I started to apply that, like we said earlier, in my life as well. Now, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is very unique. We also practice that. And there's a lot of different styles. But what I like about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and you touched on that, is that we don't necessarily go in with all that power, you know. We kind of use the energy and the power of the other person, the momentum, make those small pivots, those small little moves. And, uh, of course, we're going to have the days where we're going to be the hammer and where we other days we have the nail. But that's where the lesson is, and that's where the humility comes in, knowing that maybe I win five fights today, and tomorrow I, lo I lose them, you know, and that teaches me new lessons. So let's talk about the journey in martial arts. How did you, um, what age were you when you started getting into that, and how did your official martial arts journey start you, with you and your brothers? Uh, four years old. Uh, sure. First time, I remember, oh. yeah, uh, training. Five year old first tournament. Uh, I I don't think I ever had a, a lapse on my training other than a month here, another month there, whether um, you know, I was injured or I was on a travel. Uh so it has been I would say fifty six years of continuous practice wow. of, of jujitsu. Uh okay, so the journey, okay. Uh, when you're a student, you don't think about anybody else but you. You know, all you care about, I want to grow, I want to get better, I want to be the top gun in the class, I want to win the matches, I want to make my instructor proud. So I had that phase from my early, uh, you know, childhood up to, you know, mid-teens. At the age of 16, I, I got my blue belt, uh, wow. and I became a, a junior assistant instructor, and that's the first time I ever started to worry about helping others you know so yeah. i was not a full, full scale instructor but i was a junior and i enjoyed uh, doing that so i started to pay attention how can i help yes. other people you know with whatever i know i'm not yet a black belt but i know something so let's see what i can do with it and pass yes. that on so that's the first step you help somebody and then i became a black belt and also an instructor, uh, one of the main instructors at the academies that we used to run in Brazil in in the mid, you know, early eighties to uh, late eighties because I came here in nineteen ninety. So I had probably like a, I would say eight years of uh, tenure as a, an instructor in Brazil before my move to America, and and uh, I guess. I, I started to realize that there is a mentorship aspect mm -hmm. also involved because I started to kind of like uh, give my students some uh, values along with the teachings of the techniques. Like if they picked fights on the street, if they're mm -hmm. being unruly, they're not supposed to bully anybody, you know, uh, or misuse their power. You know, if you know how to fight, mm -hmm. you're not going to pick a fight with somebody who doesn't. Yeah. Go yeah. to a tournament and fight somebody who can give yeah. you a fight instead of being a coward, mm -hmm. you know, so, so, you know, and bear with me that when you're dealing with younger uh, students, sometimes these people go out and stuff, they do jujitsu, they feel like they're Superman, whatever martial arts they do, if yeah. they don't have the right guidance, uh, the hormones will do the talk for them and they might become unruly. So mm -hmm. that's it. I had my, my share of experience suspending students, 
uh, I didn't ban anybody from my academy back then, but I did enforce some rules that they were more scared of me than their yeah. parents. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because, and, and I was trying to do what I believe was a good thing because you know, you're not supposed to use this, you know, in, in, in a way other than making peace, you know. But I also understand you want peace, be ready for war. Yes. You know what I'm saying? You have to be. You know, the reason I believe martial arts is, is such a critical activity is because it builds competence uh, in, a, in, in a discipline mm -hmm. that can serve you well if you need to defend yourself. And, yes. and that in, indefinitely, uh, invariably, will cause you to become more competent or confident yeah. in handling situations, including averting violence. Because if you're confident, probably you're going to try to talk people out yes. of uh, getting into a fight. But if you're not confident, you're a lot more prone to actually get into a, a violent situation. So this was my upbringing there in Brazil. And then when I come to America, of course, we are here uh, with the wave of jiu-jitsu. And my cousin Hoyce, uh, Gracie, did the first UFC in 93. And mm -hmm. then everybody started to kind of talk about it and this and that. So we're right there in the in the beginning of that wave, and then uh, my brothers were in California. I after a while I came to Texas and it started to spread from out here, uh, and uh, I realized that, you know, I, I have to figure out what do I really want to do. How am I going to cause an impact mm -hmm. into into this world? And the only way you can do it is by building a legacy. That's you it. Know what I'm saying, yeah. you're not going to last forever, but hopefully those that you guide you know, while you're still here, functional and capable and active, uh, you can instruct them on how to carry it on, you yeah. know, whenever you can no longer push that forward, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the idea that kind of precipitated me pursuing uh, the Carlos Machado Jiu-Jitsu Association. How can I pass the experience that I have to other instructors that they can, on a personal level, enjoy the martial arts because that's another yes. thing yes. Because, uh sometimes we have our moments in life the cycles where you feel you lose interest in things mm -hmm. you know people talk about midlife crisis you know you yeah know, people always okay you know you know when you turn into your 50s and stuff you're gonna either buy a new car or get a new wife you know they kind of like have all these comparisons and and th that kind of attitude sometimes uh it can happen too in, in different activities that you do. People mm -hmm. change careers. Yes. You know, it's time to try something new. But when it comes to jujitsu, the thing with jujitsu, though, in particular, is it's such a vast and complex mm -hmm. martial art that yeah. you're never going to run out of new material. It, it literally reinvents itself yes. on and on and on. You can do the same move today with a little adjustment mm -hmm. that is that moved 10 times better than what it was before then without having to add too much to it. So you have this experience ongoing mm -hmm. forever, yeah. but mm -hmm. you got to remain an eternal student. Mm -hmm. If you have that attitude that you already know enough, that you know it all, that you don't need to learn anything else, yeah. that's the beginning of the end. Because it's what I, I compare to a kid in a candy shop, you know, jujitsu, that's that experience. You're a kid in a candy shop. You're never going to run out mm -hmm. of uh, options to hit your sweet spot. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Uh, but, but with that said, going yeah. back to the mentorship part, uh, if I don't influence uh, people by offering the opportunities to learn good quality martial arts, yes. a good methodology of teaching, mm -hmm. you can be a fighter. That doesn't mean that you're going to be a good instructor. Thanks. Unfortunately... You have so many people that, man, they do great in tournaments and they go teach. They want to make the guy that they're teaching the world champion when that guy never wants to be a world champion. He just wants to enjoy the martial arts lifestyle. Yeah. You know, so how can I make the language of jiu-jitsu universal that anybody, mm -hmm. whether you are a tough athlete or a lame, you know, executive that stays behind the desk all day, you know, so there's a way to do it yes. if you work with the language and the yes. method which yeah. you pass the information. So that's one part. The other aspect is there's a bias sometimes. I'm not saying that all martial arts do that because I've seen in Taekwondo and Karate, 
a lot of very successful businessmen, mm -hmm. you know, people that know how to run a successful business and their business happens to be the martial arts business, right? So they use principles that correlate to any business. They have structure, staff training, they have, uh, uh, you know, they, 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 they have a, a methodology, uh, mm -hmm. they have a criteria on how they rank. They have all different elements that mm -hmm. will keep the, the wheel spinning. Mm -hmm. But then we have that romantic idea sometimes when, you know, for me, back in the old days, I thought, okay, if I'm going to rank from white to blue belt, I have to beat up all, beat all the blue belts in the room, you know, big and small. I have to take them all. And then if I do that, then I can convince everybody that I'm ready for the next level. But nowadays, you don't have just a handful of people doing jujitsu. You have, you know, millions of people doing it, right? So, and you have people that are highly trained in different disciplines, very athletic. So you cannot put in a room uh, one single student and say, hey, bud, once you overcome all these uh, blue belts here, I'll give you a blue belt. And then if you're a purple belt, once you get hang hang on with all those uh, purple belts, I'll give no. You gotta you gotta give them a roadmap. Yeah, this is what you need. You don't have to be better than anybody, but mm -hmm. you have to have a standard that mm -hmm. will make the average above the average. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. all, all I care to accomplish is I want to make the average above the average. Yeah, you know, when you're gonna be a old world champion or the best hobbyist in the world, yeah. uh, you're gonna gain the benefits mm -hmm. of and be proficient enough to justify your advancement in the art. Mm -hmm. So going back to the business part, like we do events, we have one coming up uh, April 19th and 20th. I wish you could attend. I'm not sure where you are. Are you in Texas? I'm in Texas, yes. Okay. So I'll send you an invitation in case you awesome. are. How far, how far are you from Dallas, uh, by the way? Um, I'm in Tyler. I think it's about four hours, four or five hours. Well, I'll definitely, uh, if you want to cover the event or... Have more interviews and stuff. Thank uh, we'll, you. we'll put that on the books. But going back to our saying, basically, it's a congregation of uh, like minded people. Mm -hmm. So we have 15, 20,000 square feet of mats. We have 500 people on the mats. Uh, I teach several hours. I have several of my black belts who are part of my organization teaching uh, different topics, you know, that we spread it out. And we have business people that come and share their knowledge and their skills. How can I ensure that? You can keep the doors of your dojo open. Mm -hmm. That you can hear that you can be good on the mat, but also when you go to sleep at night, you know your bills will get paid. You mm -hmm. know you're going to take care of business in that yeah. sense too. And a lot of times when those things happen, you realize the gap between people that make it and those who break it is not in their ability to mm -hmm. perform. Mm -hmm. It's in, the, in their acceptance yes. that they can. Wow. They doubt themselves. You know, so I have to talk mm -hmm. not to the adult who wants to have it all. I want to talk to the kid mm -hmm. that is that, that person's had yes. who is not to make it because he feels it's too good mm -hmm. to be true. Yeah. Or he feels that everybody can, but he cannot, mm -hmm. you know. So unless we crack that armor and mm -hmm. take that thing out of their head, yeah. they are not going to embrace it fully. That, that's why there is this curse that sometimes happens where you can give gold to everybody. Yes. And some will dig a hole and put the gold in the hole, mm -hmm. and the other will take the gold and spread to the world. You see what I'm saying? So why why is it both are learning the same thing, same have same. access to opportunity to the same mm -hmm. thing, one is using it and the other is not? Wow. It's not because they cannot. It's mm -hmm. because they, they believe they can't. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. The one that have a problem, he goes at it. The other one. So, mm -hmm. so those things, and it's funny because you realize that business is transformational, not mm -hmm. transactional. That's it. Yeah. Transactional is the last part. Mm -hmm. The money part only happens after you deal with the transformation part. Mm -hmm. I cannot be successful unless I accept that yeah. I can be successful. And uh, you know, so having all these different. So, so then I'm just throwing at you here the paradigms that all of us have to go through, including myself. And then you have to get the attitude. Yes. Why not? Why not be successful? Why yeah. not be affluent? Why not be mm -hmm. healthy? Why not be uh, successful in any area that we entertain to be? 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So don't take no as an answer. Mm -hmm. Somebody tells you no, you're going to have to come back. Why not? Yes. The, and you're going to have to ask more than once. And mm -hmm. eventually you're going to peel, peel off all the layers of the onion and get to the core. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times people that don't believe in you, they actually project their disbelief in themselves. Oh, all the naysayers, all yeah. the naysayers, it's not that they don't want you to succeed. They can't believe anybody can succeed because they can't believe they themselves yes. can be successful. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So you can't take everybody's opinion uh, as the the ingredients for you to make a decision about your life. You know? Because yeah. in the end of the day, guess yeah. what? You have three roles. Mm -hmm. You are the writer, the yes. actor, and the director of your story. Wow, that's you know powerful. I mean? And, and basically, Juanita, you cannot let anybody write your story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can get pieces of other people's stories and add to yours if you want. And yeah. I think it's wise because there are a lot of people that can give you blueprint on yes. how to become better. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's your story. The problem with us is we leave the stories that other people write for us mm -hmm. because we refuse to do the job ourselves. Yes. So you have to have the bottom line. Am I going to be live my life or mm -hmm. the life that somebody wants to write for me? Yeah. And the, other, the hardest part is the director mm -hmm. because the director, he knows the before, the during, and the after. Mm -hmm. You know, a director, when, when they direct a scene, they yeah. know what they want from the actor. They know That's... what the storyline is and mm -hmm. they know what the end is likely to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you got to be there. It's kind of literally like a godly feeling. Yes. You got that one has to do with destiny. I have to be in charge of my destiny. I uh, want to have the end the, yes. according to my script, not anybody else's. Wow. And the actor, and the actor, no matter what story you're in, you mm -hmm. are the star. Yes. You are the star. There's yeah. nobody that can outdo you or 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 overshadow you. Yeah. Because that's the story. That, that there's not a place for you can have other characters that yes. are relevant and co-stars. If you have, yes. if you're married, you have your wife. If you have kids, those yes. are top characters in your yes. storyline that they they're gonna be part of your life in a major way. But yeah. guess what? Yeah, there are quite a few that are just there temporarily. That they are there for one season. Guess mm -hmm. what? Another season, they're no longer gonna be part of the plot. And that's one of the hardest things for people to understand. When you make peace with the fact that those that you have in your circle today may not be part of your circle tomorrow, it's not yeah. because you don't want. It's yes. because if you really resolved to pursue uh, your goals and, yeah. and your destiny, be in charge yeah. of your destiny, you're going to have to let go in mm -hmm. order to let it go. Wow. You know what wow. I'm saying? And, 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 and people that you have, uh, it's purge purges in relationship is like shedding the skin uh yeah. like a shedding the skin we're gonna have to shed our skin in different yes. seasons of our life that means you're gonna yes. renew the energy you're gonna open new path you're gonna know open new new room for new people new energy to come to your life you know what i'm saying and how many times you have situations where man i thought this was a bad deal you know i got rid of this person mm -hmm. and all of a sudden I met this other person and things got so much better. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yes. And 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 and, and I kind of go in a tangent here because we're talking about all these different businesses. But I mentioned Dan Pena. He's a very, you know, you know, loud mouth, you know, business uh, consultant. He has a castle in uh Scotland. I haven't been there, but he charges a bunch of money at that time, like years back, was like 30k for a week for you to go there. <laughs> you know, and live like a king for a week, but you have your ego smashed to, to pieces. So you could recondition yourself for the real world and, and really be, make, be at peace of being successful. And yes. he has three rules when it comes to, to uh, cell phone. Okay. Oh. Uh, open your contact list and uh, see all the contacts that you got. Yeah. And you're going you're gonna to filter those contacts. Uh, who are those who are in alignment with your purpose, whatever wow. your purpose might be, or your goals? So alignment can be those who add mm -hmm. to your purpose, 
uh, and they could be neutral, guys who don't add or subtract. Mm -hmm. And then you have those who subtract oh, yeah. from, from your purpose. If so he said, the ones who subtract, delete it. The mm -hmm. ones that don't add anything to it, but they don't take, they, mm -hmm. they don't they don't subtract nor to add, block them. Uh -huh. And keep, keep active. Only those who add. Yes. And you're going to have a major shift in the wow. way things are going to be. Okay? Because now you're giving your time to yes. people who are more relevant to what you really want out of life. Right? That's so with it. that said, what's the first rule? Say more no than yes. Yes, that's true. Say more no than yes. Yeah. You know, why did I tell yes to you? Because yeah. I feel what you do carries a message that's going to impact a lot of people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I'm in. I want to spend time with people like you, you know, because you're serving well those that you Thank care you. about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm, I'm appreciative of the fact that you, you invited me over for this uh, conversation. But it, it's not easy. Because every day in life, we are confronted with people that want our time, want mm -hmm. our energy, but they are not adding anything. That's to true. It. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that brings me to another topic. And I know we're going to tangent. That's you good. can always interrupt me if you want. Uh, we live in a world that if you're a good person, if you have true mm -hmm. intentions and a high purpose, yeah. you have a lot of spiritual power. Your nice. battery, your life battery is pretty high. Right? Yeah. yeah. You're going to attract great people in your life, but unfortunately, you're going to attract quite a few that they leave off taking life energy yes. of people like that. Yes. If you're really true to your intentions, mm -hmm. really true to your goals, you have high values, you have yeah. a higher purpose, you're going to do a lot of good in this world. Yeah. So the vampires will come at you mm -hmm. like the moths that get attracted by the light. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you got to get, you know, your buffer zone, yes. you know, and be really mindful who yes. you spend time with, mm -hmm. who you give access to your inner circle. That's true. And that's another thing. People yeah. cannot be part of your inner circle unless they earn your trust. That's true. If, you're, if you let anybody in, yeah. you know, you fast, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to be in situations where there'll be toxicity. Added mm -hmm. to your environment, toxic people uh, affecting you and those that are part of your circle that are aligned with you because you have one person that's like the the bad apple, mm -hmm. you know, contaminating everything. Yeah. And they always say that thing in, in you know that standard of successful management, you know, slow to hire, quick mm -hmm. to fire. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. you know people take time to to gain the trust because they have to be tested i guess yes. you know time is, is one of the best you know ways to do it and uh and then a lot of times you start to see red flags here and there and you don't act on it man you gotta act on it yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah being silent wow. or negligent when action is required means means your complicity you know yes. so if you fail it's because you fail to act when you should have that's true wow that's very powerful uh, carlos you know uh I, I actually went through a stage early in my in my business years that I um, had contact with people that were just so draining, you know. And someone mentioned in those years, they mentioned the term energy vampire. And I actually Googled it. I, I went on YouTube and I watched videos about what are energy vampires. And I got to, you know, do some research on it. And I found that when I looked at the people that I was working with, there were some that were only takers and there were some that were givers, you know, like high energy people like us. We we connect the dots. We help where we can. We train. We, you know, we learn and then we pay that forward. And I had to have a sit down with myself and they were very good friends of mine, but I had to have a sit down with myself and start to select um, because uh, I sat to and listened to a sermon. I was a pastor for 15 years, but I listened to a sermon online one Sunday and what the person said was givers are makers and takers are breakers. And that spoke to me on a hard level because in the ministry, of course, you'll know, it's all about giving, giving, giving. And there's people that reciprocate that, the same as in the martial arts. Some people just take the knowledge and they keep it to themselves. And others, the rest of us, 
we want to teach that next student and we want to learn the new lesson because we want to take it and, you know, uh, develop some other people, other students. So that's very true what you said about that. Martial arts is not just, it's not just an art, it's a science, but it's a lifestyle. It's an energy that you carry. Uh, I've met so many people across the globe. And before we even start talking about, uh, you know, if they're martial artists or what they do for a living, we connect, you know, because there's that energy. And when we start talking, we understand each other. And I spoke to someone when I went to an event earlier this year and I talked to them about the fact that I don't know what it is. It must be that energy, but we just understand each other. And that's because we practice the same art. We have the same morals. We have the same goals, the same values. Now, let's talk about underdog stories because we were talking about being the main character in your story. You know, being the not only the character, but the author, but also the director. I always tell people, you know, uh, directors make a lot of choices, right? They have a lot to do before they even start the first shoot. And the choices we make is the life that we live. So the choices we make as executive producers and, and directors, that's going to determine what the end result is going to be. So let's talk about underdog stories because I love a good underdog story as purely for the fact that I've seen so many people who've had uh, people speak negative things over their lives. Like you mentioned, if they believe it, they're not going to accomplish anything. They have to look into their inner beliefs and believe in what they can accomplish and I feel like underdogs do that, Carlos, because, you know, they might not have the perfect start or they might not always have the same opportunities, but they believe in themselves. They believe in their stories and they decide they are going to make it. Have you had any underdogs in the, your years of all making all these martial arts children and grandchildren out there that you've trained? Have you ever had someone that's left that impression on you? Yeah, uh, okay, so... Um, you see, the thing is, my expectations are always that people will make the best yes. out of what you got. Okay, I try to instill that attitude of don't compare yourself to others. That's it. Use the mirror as the real measure. Yes. Okay, who is the person in the mirror, and that's the one you want to overcome. Okay, yeah. so I want I want my tomorrow to be better than today. Mm -hmm. I want my today to be better than yesterday. Yes. And a lot of times it's in small degrees. Sometimes you take a leap, but knowledge, wisdom, yeah. and, you know, success, you know, we have cycles. Sometimes if you are not improving, mm -hmm. but there's small, as long as you are active and focused, there's small percentage that, you know, I, I call the one percenters is barely it, noticeable. Yes. But because you have discipline and you're open to it, you can overcome and go beyond what, would be the case for many people who might felt uh, like quitting at a point in time. Uh, the thing about underdogs, I feel that uh, my example here is not necessarily that I had a, a student that didn't have what it took yeah. and surprised me. You know, it was more people didn't have the, the circumstances right mm. and they, they beat the odds. Okay, like for instance, uh, nice. I had guys that didn't live in Dallas when I first came. They yes. would drive three hours every day, three hours to come to my academy, another three hours to go back to wherever they were. And they became black belts. You know, they became black belts. In, you know, they, they, they spent literally six, seven hours. And then you look at sometimes people that live just down the road from me. Uh -huh. said, man, you're coming later and missing a class. And then I have this guy yeah. that showed up. You know, day in and day out, never misses the classes. And so I have quite a few of those that they're so determined mm -hmm. to learn yeah. that they didn't care how much gas they had to spend, how much time they had to spend, because mm -hmm. they invested on that. Yes. And eventually they got a return for it. You know, yes. they, they became a call. You know, so uh, so I, th I feel... If I could tell, uh, so I also have students who are born with handicaps, mm -hmm. and uh, they, they, regardless, I had blind students that train. I had students that had, you know, their limbs kind of born with some defective, you know, in, in, in their anatomy, and they, they, they still train. They are higher ranked, and they probably will attain, you know, black belt level or black belts themselves uh, at a point in time. 
So they never let anything that other people might become, uh, you know, uh, psychologically affected. Mm -hmm. He actually became became a motivation for them, you know, mm -hmm. to to overcome. My brother Jean Jacques Machado, for instance, mm -hmm. he's an amazing, amazing martial artist, a major wow. one of the greatest competitors uh, uh, in jujitsu. And uh, you know, people are, they know that his left hand mm -hmm. he didn't have the fingers, but oh. despite that, he was national champion of wow. Brazil in, in hockey. That's you deep. know, can you imagine you hold a hockey stick. You know, he was supposed to go on the Olympics uh, for that. I don't know how, uh, if they had the rollerblade type of hockey. Uh, so I have within my own family, people that have That's taught, you're, you're not, there's no limit to what you can attain. That's it. You know, and then yeah. and then you have other, other, you know, students left and right that on a daily basis, I learn more. I, I, I feel like this, Bonita. I feel that when I go to teach, it's ironic because... Uh, they pay me to teach them, yes. but I learned so much from them That's that I true. almost feel I should be paying them. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So if I cannot give them back in in monetary terms, I try to give my best in terms of my energy, my time, and my focus, and whatever knowledge I got. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, but it, it's it's interesting. So that's, that's kind of like I would say. Yeah. Uh, it's not the you have a lemon make a lemonade kind of approach. It's just that, you know, uh, when you watch a sh at a sh as a, sh a show like American Idol, yeah. uh, you see the candidates performing amazingly and getting all the accolades and eventually winning. And but you know, it's I, I my favorite part is not the performance. Mm -hmm. It's not when, when the curtains open. My favorite part on those shows is behind the scenes when they're kids. You know the the singing lessons, the different uh, challenges that they had, the amount of time they they dedicated to it, how their parents had to squeeze yeah. all their funds to finance yeah. their kid because they believed that kid had what it took, and eventually yeah. they go out there and 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 shine. You know at their moment, and, but we, we our culture a lot of times we are used to see just success as the the afterthought, something that happens almost like in a blimp and yeah. we don't watch all the different steps yeah. before. And that's literally, that's you know, you have the tip of the iceberg, yeah. the iceberg, and yeah. then you have the whole iceberg underwater that you cannot see the amount of time and challenges and obstacles that it takes for somebody to have their shiny moment, you know? Yes. So those things are inspiring and they teach us. I think everybody is a hero. You know, in my opinion. Some of them just don't know about it, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and they have to become aware of it. You know? and, and like I said, it's not to be better than anybody, mm -hmm. but to be the best you can be. And and that's the real measure, you know. That's so it. people don't realize the blood, the sweat, and the tears that go in those obstacles that uh, people face before they reach that pinnacle of their success. And that, of course, as you mentioned before, is just a step to the next level, right? So people don't always see that. They don't see or look at the origins. I think back about uh, one of the students that I trained with in South Africa. He was a brown belt for a few years simply for the fact that he didn't believe in himself to, you know, pass the black belt um, karate, um, you know, uh, training. He, did, he didn't think he would make it. And we went to the nationals. I believe it was in, it was last year. No, it was, yeah, it was last year. And he was a very good fighter. And I, I fought him. He was my committee partner most of the time. And he, he went to the nationals and I stood in the corner. I was one of the um, officials there at the nationals and he fought such a good fight. And I kept cheering him on and I kept coaching him a little bit and he won. And when he got off the mat, he came to me. His name is uh, Uvio. He came to me and he gave me this big hug and he had this this look in his face and he was cheering up, you know, and he said something to me that I'll never forget. He said, thank you for believing in me because now I believe it too. And earlier this year, guess what he did? He went for his black belt grading and he passed and he did so well. It just took a little bit of someone believing in him for him to believe in himself and for him to get to that goal. 
And I know that he's got a bright future ahead in the martial arts. You know what we do out there, Carlos, is so important. There's nothing, in, and I know this will resonate with you, there's no better feeling in the world than starting with a student and seeing their development and just looking at their faces when they get that move right. And, you know, they, they just that, that feeling that they get when they've accomplished something. It's all about giving and helping and uplifting. And that's what I love to do. And I know that's what you do in your dojos um, as well. So, you know, the students are so valuable. What, what are we as teachers and mentors if we don't invest into our students? Tell us a little bit about the students that you have currently. Do you still, you still have, um, are you going different places or are you, where are you situated? Dallas, Texas now, or how is that working for you? All right. So I'll answer that. I just kind of recap what you just said about your student that, uh, you know, he, you know, about the importance of you being there for that person at that time. Yeah. I call the three R's, the three R's. The three R's. Uh, yeah. Being the right person at the right time at the right place. Yeah. You know, so when you align those three, you are there at the right place at the right time yeah. that interact with that person and he, they carried it on. He carried it on and was able to accomplish and he made a difference. Okay, so out of the Carlos Machado universe, there is one place you can go that tells a lot about me, about what I do, about what's happening. It's called machadomethod.com awesome. yeah, and Machado Method. and I can send you the links later we can always share why that is important because for instance I give an example I was talking about the spring camp that we're going to do next month yes. that's where people register they can go there they can see who's going to teach the schedule where it's going to be and literally if I'm not even tell you how much it costs because it's so cheap compared to everything else that you can see yeah. that people think like, you know, I don't even want to announce that. I don't talk about prices because I'm afraid it's going to sell out and, and, and people might, uh, you know, so I have to be mindful, <laughs> but I want to offer the opportunity for yeah. the instructors that we have within our group, 140 academies, their students who can make it to have a family reunion. That's literally what it is. We are there for two and a half days and basically, we have several hours of instruction. We have business classes to teach people how to take care of business. Fantastic. They interact and, and hook up and, 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 and learn from one another. They, they exchange information. So we have, for me, the, just knowing the, who is in the room, because you have schools that barely started, to all yeah. the schools who are multi-million dollar a Thanks. year martial arts dojos. Yeah. And guess what? We're all sharing the same mat. And they're open to talk to, to each other about anything. We have a meet and greet at the hotel lobby where we all go. It's literally it's like an invasion. We take over the hotel. And all we're doing, we're saying hi to one another. And we make sure that everybody knows everybody mm -hmm. before the time. All right? That's good. It's very valuable. You know, I'm a believer. Your network determines your yes. net worth. Net worth. Your that's it. So if I can give an advice to anybody who does anything event-wise or goes to an event, yeah. Know the people, yes. know who the room, know yes. who they are, know what they do. So we have the spring camps. The next one we're going to have, which is also in the Machado Method, they, it's going to happen between the 19th and the 21st. On the 21st, we're doing a kids-only tournament. Oh, called, called, it's, I, I think it's called the Grappler, Grapple Fest or Grappler's Fest. It's all rock and roll theme. The, the trophy will be a guitar. We're going to have, you know, kids-friendly rock and roll. That's going to be all kind of gigs and bunging, uh, bunging uh, you know, uh, houses and all kind of stuff. My wife, Lindsay, is the one that idealized that. We have a, an awesome staff. Roger Perry's Justin Hall, work closely with me. We're all scheming to make sure that the kids will have a blast. And this is going to be on the 21st, on the last day, right? Yeah. On top of that... Me and three of my brothers, Roger, Hegan, and John, we're going to be in Oklahoma at the Century uh, Martial Arts uh, uh, headquarters. You know, Century, oh, yes. one of the, many, the largest martial arts supplier in the world. That's they are, they're hosting us there. We're going to be in Oklahoma right there. 
for the Brothers Camp is going to be on June 9th. That's when we start. We're going to be there for two and a half days. And all the brothers are going to share the magic and be there with everybody. It's going to be amazing. Okay, So we have that too. Um, on top of that, hey, there's hoodie here. You know, I just wear with pride. You know, uh, it's funny because a lot of times I go to the gym and people used to know me with more hair back in the old days. So when they see me bald, sometimes they don't know I'm Carlos. And they come to me, hey, you're training, you're training with that guy? I stay quiet because I want to see if I'm Oh crap! Or Did they get a, you? Oh yeah, that, you know I heard about that dojo. Yeah, I happened to be the guy. Oh, they they kind of laugh and stuff, you know. So I I actually you know have had the fortune of having a lot of uh, students and sometimes nice, very nice clients coming out of my just by me wearing my stuff. So at the Machado Method, we also have uh, the mm -hmm. window for our uh, apparel which is CMJ, CMJJ gear, oh, CM, CMJ the initials for gear. Childhood Jiu Jitsu, CMJJgear.com. There's some cool stuff out there from caps to uh, key chains to m coffee mugs, hoodies, you name, shirts, you name it, geese. So anybody who wants to check it out. But when you talk about purpose, I want to kind of kind of add this up, okay? Yeah. I am a believer that everybody has a right under the sun for yes. instance you do it honestly you do it diligently you mm -hmm. should earn your spot okay mm -hmm. and in the martial arts industry i'm not fond of trying to take business from any other instructor i don't believe in that you mm -hmm. know but i don't like when there's a situation that i see somebody being wronged okay yes. and something as such in our industry industry called the martial arts orphan Mm, martial arts often, yeah. yeah. So what happened is when you have unmet expectations, when you have things done to you, uh, you being sidelined, uh, an instructor uh, and a student having a fallout, not because the student was at fault, but the instructor failed mm -hmm. to fulfill the expectations. And there are several different things that can be the case in situations like that. In those instances, I, I've been fortunate enough that different opportunities that I have when I travel for seminars, yeah. you know, uh, I do have a calendar of the seminars. I'm going to be actually in the UK uh, this week between wow. Thursday and Monday of next week, wow. teaching out there, you know, in when one of my representatives, Mr. Damien mm -hmm. Glashine, my, my British brother. Anyhow, going back to what I was saying. Uh, I, I feel like we all have a mission, and yes. our mission is to help people at any given time, not by getting ourselves in the hole with them, mm -hmm. but extending our hands and, and lifting them up yeah. and carrying them, carrying them on until yeah. they can walk on their own. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I mean, so, uh, you know, and like I said, for a lot of people, they don't have mentorship, they don't have a martial arts family. Mm -hmm. Anybody hearing this, if you don't have a family, I would love you to be a guest in any of our events with no, 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 nothing more than sharing a good time with a jujitsu family. You know what I'm saying? But definitely, if you're in a spot that you're not happy about, mm -hmm. whether it's with me or anybody else, you yeah. should take mm -hmm. the diligence to find whatever options you have mm -hmm. at hand. Because one thing I learned is a lot of times we delay taking action when we feel we need to have a change or make a change yeah. uh, because we're afraid of the repercussions. Mm -hmm. and one of the issues that happen is, is not that this connection between a student and an instructor is bad enough, but yes. uh, that is, 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 is bad enough because mm -hmm. that's like a, it's almost like a family member, but the loss of all the relationships of mm -hmm. the teammate. That's uh, it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's what weighs the most. That's you don't it. want to lose access to those people, nor being looked at as a traitor uh, to those people. Yeah. And that's the thing that delays a lot of times. But the, in the in the end of the day, people have to have a question. What is in my best interest? You have yeah. to have a self question. What yeah. is in the best interest of my family? And if you have the answer where you are, stay where you are. But if you don't, you got to fight for the answers wherever you need to. 
You yeah. know what I'm saying? Exactly. That's why I'm emphatic about that. So that's all I wanted to share and kind of spill out, you know, and just kind of let you know. Fantastic, you know, so. Carlos. Absolutely agree with you 100%. Uh, I love the fact that, uh, you know, jiu-jitsu especially helps us to do a lot of introspection. It really stretches us. It really gives us that endurance. And having, I always say that the dojo is my second home. Because my, you know, my kids do martial arts with me. And if we're not home, we're training. Because we have such a close-knit family there. And those connections are for life because martial arts is a lifelong journey. And I'm so yeah. blessed. I want to give a shout-out to my entire uh, martial arts family. Carlos, you're a part of that now as well. You guys are just doing so many things across the globe, shining so amazingly and helping people. And that is just uh, honorable to me. Um, you know, I want to give a shout out to Kim Blake, a mutual friend. She's also a very close friend of mine and Shannon, the Canon Rich. Uh, we both know Shannon. So shout out to you guys. And I want to ask one final question, Carlos. What words of wisdom would you leave with the audience today? My, 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 my wisdom, uh, and that's a truth that you can't escape. Jiu-Jitsu will never be a job done yeah. but always a work in progress so it, it it's endless it's endless it's like you said it's like a kid in a candy store right we learn every day and that's the joy of it all guys we all have something to learn i want to say thank you carlos it has been a tremendous honor to interview you i appreciate you and we'll talk about the dates for your event. Thank you so much for inviting me to cover your event. That is a huge honor. I really appreciate that. And I wish you a wonderful day. Have a wonderful too, Juanita. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir.